Hello. Uh, today I'll be talking about some of the benefits and challenges that we've experienced with using Grafana with MySQL at your content group. My name is Philip Warnersbach. I'm a software engineer for Ingram Content Group. Um, here's my GitHub. I have cool stuff on there. Um, here's my LinkedIn. I actually hate LinkedIn, but I throw it up there anyways. <laughs> and so I work in Ingram Content Group's automated print-on-demand division. And what that is, is we have a website that you can get on, anybody, uh, independent publishers, corporate publishers, anybody. And you can upload your book in the PDF format or another standard book format and tell us how many copies you want and automatically we will print, bind, and ship your book to you. And so this process involves a lot of hardware devices and software components. And as we've scaled our operations up, we've realized that we need to collect, aggregate, and display metrics from this process to end users. Um, and so we have the collection piece down. Um, we collect different things using a homegrown, um, home programmed approach like device status, tracking data for every piece of material for every book. Uh, we do throughput metrics like how many books we're producing an hour, you know, what's this device produced, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and just to give you guys an idea, for every plant that we have, and we have three plants right now on this system, we produce gigabytes of data an hour. So that's kind of our scale. Um, so now that we have the collection portion of that down, the next portion is how do we aggregate and display our data to the end user. And we looked at a lot of different solutions and we came up with Grafana, obviously, because that's why we're here. Um, Grafana was the only one that had the features that we needed and that was production ready that we felt like we could throw at the operations team and let them go with it. Um, and so after we chose to use Grafana, the next problem that we ran into was which data store do we use with it? Because as we all know, um, Grafana is a graphical front end and it needs a back end data store. So there's all these different front ends or data stores it supports. Um, we compared options and decided to go with InfluxDB at first. Um, and unfortunately, we did several tests with it with real life data that we had and there were sticking points to it, both technical and organizational, that caused us to rule it out. So after we ruled that out, we said, you know, we already have a MySQL cluster. Why don't we just go ahead and use that? Our people are already trained on that. Um, you know, it handles the gigabytes of data. It's already proven. So we decided to go with that. Um, so that brings us to this talk, which is all about our Grafana My MySQL solution, because we had to program that ourselves. Um, and so what it is, is our solution is we have a separate daemon server that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Grafana queries that it acts as an InfluxDB server, it emulates, um, it speaks the InfluxDB protocol, and then it essentially converts InfluxDB protocol to MySQL protocol and back. So. It's written in NIM, it emulates an InfluxDB server, um, connects to our existing MySQL servers. It's protocol compatible with InfluxDB 093, um, and it acts as a proxy that converts between InfluxDB and MySQL and vice versa. And so when it's in production, this is the basically path a query takes from Grafana through the integration proxy to MySQL and back. So as we can see, it goes from Grafana, gets converted from InfluxDB protocol to MySQL protocol, goes through MySQL, and then makes a round trip back to Grafana. And so with this um, sort of approach, this proxy daemon approach, that allows us to use this with Grafana um, without any changes to Grafana. But there are some challenges with this because InfluxDB and MySQL are fundamentally different databases. Um, and so a lot of the challenges that we ran into had to deal with the different engines. Um, InfluxDB's uh, time series database, it's specialized for that use case, whereas MySQL is a generic relational database. And so in InfluxDB, time has a special value and it applies special logic to time, 
Whereas in MySQL, time's just a generic value. It's another column, and it doesn't apply any special logic. So a good way to think about this is InfluxDB smart, and MySQL is dumb as rocks. So, <laughs> and so a good way that I like to demonstrate the engine differences is with a query. So this is our InfluxDB query. Looks nice. Um, pretty simple. We're selecting a count of R1 fields from our Foo series. We're putting some conditions on it that include a time condition, and then we're grouping it by hours. Um, so we see this as humans. We know what it does. And one thing especially is as humans, when we see group by one hour, we know that we want every hour to be grouped differently from one another. So 12 o'clock on a Monday, we don't want that grouped with 12 o'clock on a Thursday. And InfluxDB knows that, it does the right thing, um, but unfortunately MySQL does not. So this becomes, the equivalent query for this is this in MySQL. So the first thing you'll notice is that <clears throat> we have to select time um, explicitly because InfluxDB does an implicit select on time. So we have to add that here. Um, the interval syntax is a little different. Um, and then the main thing is our group by. So MySQL, if you tell it to just group by hour, it'll group every hour individually, but it'll condense days and years and et cetera together. So in order for it not to do that, we have to tell it to group by everything down to the hour. So we have to tell it group year, month, day, and then the hour, and it will group 12 o'clock on a Thursday with 12 o'clock on a Saturday separately instead of together. Um, and then the last thing, pretty self-explanatory, we have to tell MySQL to order the, t to return our results in time order. Um, InfluxDB does this implicitly, MySQL just returns it to you with no guarantees at all. Um, another issue that we ran into is that InfluxQL is not SQL. Um, it's SQL-like, but not enough that it can just be passed through directly to MySQL. Um, and so, <clears throat> so some different places that this pops up um, is the, like I said, the time is implicitly selected in, in InfluxDB, and you have to explicitly select it with MySQL. Um, Grouping on time, like I said, is smart in InfluxDB and dumb in MySQL. And then one of the bigger issues is that time's represented a lot differently in InfluxDB than MySQL. Um, in MySQL, this right here is how you would represent a epoch format with millise millisecond precision. Um, and so it's a float, as we can see, um, the decimal place would be the milliseconds, and then you actually have to convert it from an it float to MySQL's date time format. Um, so you get that ugly thing right there. And then one of the other things is that InfluxDB series are roughly equivalent to MySQL tables, but the syntax is different. So like if you want to delete all your data from a series, um, it would be drop series from foo. In MySQL, deleting all data from the table would be delete from foo. Um, slight syntactic difference, but you get the point. Um, one of the bigger issues is that InfluxDB allows quoted identifiers, whereas MySQL doesn't. Um, and so if you ran this query right here, you can notice that the zero, um, I don't know how well you guys can see that, it's single quoted. Um, this is something that Grafana actually does that causes problems because InfluxDB will unquote this and then parse it properly like you would expect. Whereas MySQL right here tries to do a type conversion between the quoted zero and your bar and it silently returns garbage. Um, and so since Grafana quotes identifiers so aggressively, we actually, that's the only thing that we had to patch out to be able to use this. Um, there's probably more incompatibilities, but these are the ones that we actually ran into with our production system. And so we do all this work of creating all this, um, but for what benefit? Um, well, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do it if there was no benefit. Um, 
And so the biggest benefit is that it allows us to leverage our existing knowledge of MySQL with the system administrators, the software developers, operations team. Um, it also allows us to leverage our existing MySQL cluster that we have and that we have scaling strategies for. Um, so we're not running this weird thing in production where we have InfluxDB alongside with MySQL. It's all one thing, which makes it kind of nice. Um, the other thing is it allows us to process large amounts of data. Um, I'm actually kind of curious to see in InfluxDB's new, sys new version with the changes, if this just changed at all. But when we tried to insert about a million points at a time to InfluxDB, it actually didn't work at all. It just gave an error. Um, and then MySQL handles this with no problem. In addition, we can use full regular SQL for our Grafana queries in addition to InfluxQL, which is really nice for things like joins and things like that, which InfluxQL does not support at this point. And then we're doing massive batch inserts. Um, and so what that means is our analytics database, we don't stream continuously into it, we'll batch insert and then wait for an interval and then insert more. And so this allows us to use MySQL's query cache, which actually makes the Grafana queries like significantly faster um, when you get to the large amount of data that we're returning in these graphs. Um, and so obviously this is use case specific, but it shows, you know, shows us that we can use MySQL with this proxy system to tune some of our specific use cases. So that's it. Oh, I guess we have more time. So any questions? Yes. Uh, you mentioned trying to influx DB by inserting a million points. Um, mm -hmm. Like over what? Like how many metrics do you get in terms of like? How many metrics per minute? Um, like in production. So I don't have an exact number, but I. Okay, so the question is, how many? So I mentioned that we inserted things into Influx DB, and that it didn't work. So the question was, how many metrics do we exactly insert? And the question is, per each device, we have we have about twenty. So we have about 20 and they all update at the frequency of like a minute or two minutes or so. And we have about, say we have in a plant, single plant, we have about 30 devices. So maybe 600 points, basically 600 points per minute, which equals a lot when you're doing a batch. So. Does that answer the question? Uh, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. So how, how's it been working out for you guys in production? And, and how long have you deployed this solution? Um, it's working out great. We've deployed it for about a couple months now. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. MySQL is, on inserts, it's significantly slower than InfluxDB. Um, but we can actually get our data in which is a win for us. Um, but on selects and things like that, it's the same speed. So we're paying a little bit on the insert speed to have more overall um, stability. So are you considering to keeping this, or, or you're keeping your eyes on the like VPN whenever they will be able to, to handle the load then and we'll switch over? Um, so I think, to answer your question, part of the reason why we did this is because the hope is that someday when InfluxDB matures a little bit more, you know, when they add more changes. Um, it's a really nice system right now, but it's not quite mature enough for what we need. So, the, so since this is InfluxDB compatible, the hope is that someday we'll basically be able to take the training wheels off, put InfluxDB in for real, and then take this out. So, but there's no, I guess there's no timetable for that right now. And there's no reason why we couldn't use MySQL way into the future. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how does the actual adapter work? Is it just uh, translating the queries from the Influx query language to SQL, or is it doing anything else? 
Yeah, so it, um, we're out of time a little bit, but I can explain that to you more later. But it translates queries. Um, InfluxDB has a JSON insert uh, protocol. It translates that too. So. Well, thank you very much, Philip.